Hi everyone, welcome back to Digital Dreambox. Today we're going to learn a little bit about topology. Let's get started. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the basics of topology. Then I want to go back into the outliner, show you how to organize it. And finally, we'll make a couple more props for our scene with topology in mind. Okay, so when we talk about topology, we're talking about edge distribution, which also forms the relationship of our quads, not our quads, but our polygons. And um, right here, we have uh, three types of polygons. We have the triangle, which is the most basic. It has three sides, the quad, which has four, and then um, n-gons, which is anything more than four sides. The quad, just to make note, is actually made up of two triangles. If you select it up here, you can see it has two triangles. And so when we're considering poly count for games, usually it's a measure of the triangles. At some point though, um, even though this is a quad, um, whether it's the 3D program, the texturing program, the game engine, at some point that quad gets triangulated. So, And then um, one of the things is when we're modeling, it's kind of good to use quads because it helps with our edge flow. And I'll show you what that means. Right here, we have a plane with a bunch of subdivisions. I'm going to use my multi-cut tool to slice this edge. So I'm putting a vertex right there, pressing enter. And if I go into vertex mode, you can see that there's a vertex there. And that has turned this face into an n-gon. Same with this one. They're both, uh, they both have five sides now. So one, two, three, four, and five. And what, th what that causes is it disrupts our edge flow. So as you can see now, the, the plane has, um, I can put edge loops here, but the moment I get to that or run across where that quad is, where that n-gon is, I should say, um, it stops. And that can cause um, problems when you're trying to create edge loops and you're trying to create, get a flow for your mesh. So I'm just going to delete that vertex. Um, another thing is triangles can disrupt it as well. Uh, and when I say edge flow, um, for now, I'll just bevel bel this. But when I talk about edge flow, it's usually um, has to do with uh, how the edges flow around the mesh, right? And when you're redirecting edges, it's easier to do it with quads because when you think of a quad, it has a couple lines and you can draw that path with more quads. So you can direct it. You can't do it with triangles or n-gons. At least the when you're laying down loops, Maya doesn't recognize it and the loops uh, stop. So right here, right, I can go into my, um, I can go into my multi-cut tool if I can select this. And I can lay down an edge loop on the inside, right? I can use that for paneling, um, beveling, more. Um, and if I put a triangle here, you can see that um, that gets interrupted as well. So that's something to note with triangles as well. So also one of the things is I should show you how to probably delete an edge while I'm here. So if I wanted to delete this edge and this edge. If I just press delete, it actually leaves the vertex behind. And uh, so the proper way to delete an, an edge and a vertex is to hold down control and then press delete. You can press control backspace as well, but control delete is what I usually use. So yeah, so that's a bit about um, edge loops and edge flow. Now, another thing why um, n-gons can be a bit of an issue is when it comes to sub-D modeling. Here I have a cube. It's beveled all around, and then I have some extra quads here. At the top, I have this n-gon. So it has one, two, three, four, five sides, and I have the larger n-gon behind it. And what I'm going to do is go into object mode. I'm just going to press three on the keyboard to get the preview smooth. And as you can see, there's a bit of a shading anomaly on the top. Around the sides where the um, quads and the triangles are, it's, it's fine with those. but. The n-gon, it doesn't recognize, or it doesn't know what to do with those um, vertexes. And I can show you what I mean by that as well. So if I take this and I smooth it, these vertices have started 
crossing over each other. So Maya understands quads much easier than n-gons. Just gonna undo that. Yeah, and then finally, when it comes to um, working with um, quads, it's also favorable when, when we're dealing with deformation. So um, if you ever need to animate something, right, having quads, it, it's easier. You're gonna have less issues. And that doesn't mean we can't use triangles, quads, or whatever, when we're modeling. Um, how, how I like to think about it is, is it efficient for your modeling process? Does it get you there faster? Um, does it solve some issues of figuring out that you normally would take longer with quads, right? So, for example, when you do some Boolean right operations, that leaves a lot of n-gons, and, and then what you can do is go back in and fix them, but you get to the, the shapes faster, right? And yeah, so it's up to you. Um, and then also, like when working with triangles and n-gons, is that um, does it affect your final, um, what your final look of the, the object is intended to be, right? Okay, so let's leave that for a second. Go over here. And so in the last part, we made a sofa. We had um, blocked it out. Then we added some edge loops um, all around the mesh, which is fine. We we're trying to learn how to control the structural edges. And that's good, but it also left, um, it also put some edge loops all around our mesh that we probably don't need. And so around the perimeter, you know, we have what we need, and when it smooths, it smooths fine. And then we have these ones, right? The interior loops. So what we can do is, um, when we're trying to fix up the topology, we can go, go in here and delete it, and then redirect some of the edges, turn them into quads. Or when we're first modeling, we can just put in the edges that we need, right? So if I lay down an edge here, I go to here, right? And then I go here and I keep drawing the edges I need. But that can make it a little bit uneven as well because maybe you want the distance of um, all these edges to be the, the same from the perimeter, right? From the, the end. Um, so I'm just trying to show you what I mean. So uh, if I take the multi-cut tool and I cut here to here, right? Maybe I want the edge from here to here to be the same distance, right? So one of the things we can do is, if you take a look at this, if you look at the wireframe, it looks very familiar. What it looks like is the beveling with the chamfer off. So I'll show you what that means. If I take this, duplicate it, what we can do is, um, for now, I'll just delete half this object just to, so that it doesn't collapse on the end and I can bevel this a little bit easier. Um, I'm going to select these edges, everything around the perimeter, all our structural edges. I don't even really need to grab that one. Um, okay, those ones are fine. Whenever I do this, I always miss a couple, so I'm trying to get them all this time. All right, so I think that's all of them. Okay, so now I'm gonna perform a bevel and I'm gonna turn the chamfer off, just reduce the fraction for a bit. And then I'm gonna press three on the keyboard and I missed one. <laughs> I always miss one or a couple. Uh, let's do this, miss this one. All right, and then let's bevel it again, turn the chamfer off. And now, if I press 3 on the keyboard, right, it's smoothing the way we want. Um, did I miss that one? Hang on for a second. I, no, it's fine. And um, so, yeah, it's smoothing the way we want. We can reduce the fraction a little bit. Uh, but it's left a, a, a couple n-gons, and we just need to go in and fix those now, right? So if I go into face mode, there's an n-gon there. There's one there. And there's another one up here as well. And... They're, these ones actually easy enough to fix. And as you learn to, to redirect your edges, um, it'll be easier to fix them as you go along as well, right? This one I can just bring to here, and those are both quads now, right? And pretty much the same for here, right? This one, this one, just bring it to the corner, and those will become quads. So I'll just do it as well, I guess. That becomes a quad, and that becomes a quad. The only thing you have to watch out for is, um, really long 
um, quads. So right now it's on a flat surface and this probably won't pose any issues for what we're doing in this project and even like for most game art assets, right? But even topology helps um, when you're modeling, especially when you're using sub D mode and get into like um, higher poly meshes, right? So I'll show you what um, happens if your quads get too long. This is a cylinder. And I'm just gonna put it over here. Scale it up, right? So now we have these long quads, which are essentially long triangles, right? I'm just gonna scale in the bottom. And I'm gonna turn off wireframe on shaded so you can see. You're, if you look close, there are some shading irregularities here. It doesn't look that smooth. Wherever these edges are, right, um, Maya, uh, has trouble shading those, right? And that's because these um, quads are super long, right? We can easily fix that though, like if we go into here and just give it some more edge loops. So here, 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 and here for now, right? If I go out, you can see that now that area is all fixed up. And if you go down where the the quads are longer, you can see that these are have some issues. Yeah, so that's about the topology, but most of the time, um, we don't want to add unnecessary um, um, edges and stuff when we don't need it. Um, so if we can get away with smoothing it with the minimum topology, it's fine. But but keep in mind that something like this, if it's um, maybe for an ArcViz project or a cinematic and um, it has more form to it, right? You might want to even up that topology before you hit that sub D mode. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think we're ready to move on to the next section. Okay, so here we are back in our scene, and I'm looking at the poly count display, and the triangle count seems a bit high, and the reason for that is when I had smoothed the sofa, I left it in preview mode, so it's showing higher than it is. I'm pressing 1 to go back to normal mode, and then also the door handle, I noticed that um, it looks like it's smooth, but if I press 1, it's not smooth, so I'm just going to smooth that. And I'm going to set it to one division level. There we go. Here's our scene again. I'm going to open up our outliner. And here are all our props, our objects. And they need to be named, so we'll do that first. And there's also a bunch of leftover history here. I'm just going to delete the history of these items. So selecting everything, opening up our channel box. I want to select the room as well, so I'm turning this to a regular layer selecting the room, and delete history. And sometimes you get um, leftover history from, I get it from sometimes when I combine and separate objects. So I'm just going to delete that one as well. Okay, so now let's name all these items. I'm going to do that, and then I'll fast forward this part of the video. Okay, so everything's named for us in our scene. And... Next, I want to show you guys how to hide and unhide stuff. If you select any item in the outliner or the scene, the viewport, you can press H to hide it. And if you want to immediately unhide it, you can press H again. Um, sometimes though, if you hide it, press H, and you move an item, you won't be able to press H again to unhide it. At that point, you might have to go into the outliner, and there, there you can press H to unhide it. Sometimes you can actually press Control shift h to unhide your last item, but it doesn't always work. Okay, so I'm going to reveal this again. And now let's learn how to move things around in here. So I have my door up here, and my door handle is down here. I want to move the door handle underneath the door for now. So to do that, select your door handle, hold down the middle mouse button, and then just drag that until you see that line under the door, and then let go. So now my door handle's there. I'm also going to do that with this picture frame A. I want to move it by picture frame B and C. So I'm holding down the middle mouse button and dragging that above that. And there you go. If you drag it so that it's over another item, it becomes parented to it. So we don't want that yet. One way to parent items, though, is to do that. Or what you can do is select the item you want to be a parent or a child of the parent. So I'm going to select the TV 
and I want the TV to be a child of the TV stand. So I'm selecting the TV first, holding down the control, selecting the TV stand, and I can press P to parent. Um, I want to do that with the door handle as well, right? Selecting the door handle, holding down control, selecting door, and I'm going to press P to parent. So now those are parented. All right. Let's group all our items. Before that, I want to freeze all the transformations. So I'm going to open these up so that I can see all the items. Selecting all our items, and I'm going to freeze the transformations on all these. I'm going to select the room floor and walls as well. And then the freeze transformation button's up here, so press that one. And then I want to, just to be safe, delete the history again. All right, so let's close these up. And next, um, I want to show you how to just find stuff in here or search. So every, if you ever have a lot of items in here or you want to find items that are, might be child objects, right? You can always go in here and type in something like, I guess I can type in picture frame. Just the first three letters is fine. And it'll show all the picture frame items. Yeah. And then finally, let's group all these under one item. So to group everything, select all the items and press Control G and that'll group everything. And then we just want to name our group. So we'll call this just isometric room underscore group. And if you ever want to ungroup something, just select your group, go up to edit, and you can ungroup here. So that'll ungroup all your items. I'm going to undo that though. So here's our group. If we ever want to open up our group, we just hit this little plus icon to reveal it. If you want to reveal all your items plus the child items, so the child objects as well, um, hold down shift and then click that plus item and that will reveal everything. Yeah. And I think that covers everything I want to say about the outliner. All right, that wraps things up for us today. The video was already getting kind of long, so in the next part, we'll model the final items for our scene. If this has been helping you guys out, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, and we will see you in the next one.